picture modifier here in the middle and it will just clone it out here. So let's do it that way instead. Uh, so I'm gonna leave this left side how it is for right now and, and work this direction. This is um, sort of a uh, marker for where I want this central post to be. Um, so let's use that symmetry modifier again. And here's the cool thing that I was going to show you before. Um, so it's starting at, at uh, 90 degrees to uh, the plane of our object, but we have the ability to rotate this mirror, tell it where to be. Um, I can also move it, so I can rotate it. Oops, let me just select it first. Um, rotate it 45 degrees. That's a pain. Turn angle snap off. That's dumb. Oh, I get it. It's half of 45. degrees. So I, I can put angle snap on, I just need to change uh, what the snap value is to 22.5, which is half of 45 degrees. Uh, so now when I angle snap, there we go. Uh, it's, so yeah, um, this, is, this pillar is going to be an irregular shape, which I think is actually a good thing because it's going to add a little bit more visual interest uh, to the band shell itself. Especially if if you're looking at it, you know, from this angle, uh, any of the pillars that you see from the back side, i.e., these back here, uh, are going to be are going to have this sort of you know, visual interest that uh, wouldn't otherwise be there. So yeah, um, it's close enough to this pillar. This was just sort of me eyeballing it, but I'm pretty sure that's exactly halfway. saying earlier the, the the roof in particular is gonna be really fun to do. I actually hit F eleven on my uh, browser window and it started <laughs> hiding all of the toolbars and stuff. I always I'm annoyed when I accidentally hit a keystroke and it changes something, toggles something on or off. I'm like, oh, what did I hit? Most of the time it's not very dismaying, but uh, occasionally it's sort of annoying. All right. Um, so I'm probably going to change this 22.5 back to 5 because 5 is typically uh, more utilitarian than that weird value of 22.5. Although, I will need to do it one more time because the symmetry again. Select that mirror, 
2.5. Actually, on second thought, let's just do 5, because I think this time I'm actually going to be doing... Yes, the full 45, so if I grab this and pull it over here, tell it to flip. So we're going to need to match this up and make sure that one, um, this corner here is about congruent with that, uh, but also make sure this is still in the center. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to go into a top view. here and move where this is. And that's what I was worried about. I think this pillar is going to be too small now. It's going to be too narrow for our purposes. Yeah, it makes that pillar way too narrow. Rats. You know. So I'm going to deselect this guy. Do a copy of this for reference just to see. Um, so what I'm doing here is basically bringing this guy over, rotating it, and trying my best to match the width of the pillar up. So as we can see here, it's a little bit too narrow. So I'm going to come back into this symmetry modifier. We just move it so that it's congruent on both sides. Now what that means is these pillars over here are going to be a little bit too far out. Um, but I think I've got a good way of solving that. It doesn't involve uh, too much time wasted, so let's do that next. Collapse that. Grab this edge here. And do a loop. because we don't need it anymore. Bevel is what I'm after, actually. So, move this out by Roughly, actually, so this edge here shows as being just inside of the banister rail. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And then I'm going to change my outline amount until this looks pretty close to 45 degrees. Um, it's going to look weird in my perspective view, but I'm going to fix the, the strangeness that's there. Uh, hopefully fairly quickly. here and the bottom edge. So I'm going to go to the right view. Move this up along Z. I'm going to make sure it's fairly accurate here. There we go. Uh, sometimes aliasing is your friend because if you can zoom in far enough, the single pixels on your monitor will sort of give it away when you're fairly close to level. All right, so now we just have this sort of rogue edge here and in order to fix this all we need to do first off is delete this bottom face that we made and now take these top ones here tell it to make planar along the z-axis, which is up and down. 
in Max. Some programs it uh, Y is up and X is forward, but uh, in Max Z is the up because you're starting from a top view. Hi, little donkey. Welcome to the stream. I am modeling a band shell for like a town square. Uh, so I'm in the process of changing the stage so that it's uh, flat again and then removing this edge here. Alright, um, so next I'm going to grab that uh, symmetry modifier again. Um, so I know I want the symmetry modifier to be exactly in the middle of the stage, but if you look, it's going to it's going to make a bump here. So I'll go ahead and start this and show you what, exactly what I mean. Symmetry. Uh, Take this and move it over to here. And it looks like I'm destroying my mesh, but I assure you, I am not. Because uh, this is on top of the mesh, and if I turn it off, see, everything's still there. Um, I'm just changing the angle. Now, if I had collapsed that down, it would have destroyed everything that's over here. So you do have to be somewhat careful of that sort of thing. Um, so when I do the flip, um, if, I move the, if I start moving this out, there's actually geometry over here in the original thing. That it's gonna that it's gonna look at. Um, so when I turn this back on and move this over, there's gonna be some stuff that sort of pops out whenever I move this over. See, and the further over I go, it's gonna reveal the entirety of it. So I'm actually gonna go back down into the editable editable poly and take these these uh, verts and just move them out, so that uh, I'm never gonna encounter them with the symmetry modifiers mirror plane. view and let me make sure that whenever the symmetry is finished it's right on that vert right there that I just made yeah so both sides are that way and now we've created the back side of the gazebo with very little uh, uh, need for remodeling an asset that we've already done we actually only made uh, this pillar here and the rest of them have been copies of that pillar by using this symmetry modifier. Um, now when I go to unwrap it, it's going to be an entirely different story because I probably am going to want the, the UVs to be stacked up. But I will leave that problem for later down the road. <laughs> um, look, look at my concept art and see. Yeah, so in the concept art, the back side of it is open as, as well, so it looks like this thing is the same front and back. So there's probably stairs back here too, uh, with those same banisters. So um, once I collapse this, I'm gonna grab these edges here so that we're not making too many faces that we don't actually need. Keep our poly counts in check. <coughs> now I'm getting another symmetry modifier. This one, we are going to actually move to over here. Alright, so um, this is sort of the same problem we had over here with the uh, pillar that was sort of not quite in the middle. Um, if you notice, this element doesn't actually reach to the plane, to where the symmetry modifier's plane is. So I'm going to go down here and actually grab these vertices and just scooch them that way. It doesn't matter how far I can go, you know, all the way off to infinity because uh, all that's going to happen is when I go back up here to my symmetry modifier, um, the uh, mirror plane is going to cut this in half and duplicate it on the other side. So there we go. We have the bottom half of the band shell uh, fairly well made. Um, I'm going to collapse this guy down. One second, I think I'm going to go uh, share out the... Uh,